Cudmore doesn't get himself out of trouble, finds Neil. He gives it up to Whitcomb. Whitcomb about 30 metres out from goal, and I think he may have missed it. He has, only one point. Well, a golden opportunity lost on that occasion, Bobby, because Geelong do need goals. They're trailing by 24 points now, so they need some goals. They're four goals down. Yes, they certainly need uh, a couple of goals before the end of this term. And we're about to commence time on, so time is ticking away from the Geelong point of view in this quarter. As Landy picks it up, ducks straight into a tackle, and it's called play on. It was a good piece of umpiring there, as Damien Drum has a chance of bringing up the goal. It's a lovely kick from Drum, and it makes the distance, hit the post. Just didn't have enough on it, Bob, to get there. Look from where we were sitting that it was going through the centre, then as it died, uh, it drifted across and hit the post. I don't think there's any breeze yet to worry the players. I just one of those things that happened. It just, it was just a dying shot. The only one point again for Geelong. Jess going to the outer side. Torpedo punky comes straight down the centre. Pete, oh, it's hit really the centre of the ground. Came that fast. Pete couldn't take the mark, but luckily for Geelong, he's picked up a free kick. Oh, gee, that was a good kick by Jess. Landed right in the middle of the square. As it really gets it out of the danger area, doesn't Does it? Does it ever? It takes about three to get it back. Well, that's a lovely kick from Pete, nonetheless. Jess, Jess the favourite, but the Featherby came across the front, hurt himself as he went for that mark, and Kane comes away with it. Puts a full wide, a lovely mark by Landy. Landy thought about going on, now does play on. Goes short, looking for Lee, finds that player. He'll play on straight away. Geelong completely out of position as Mark Lee puts the ball forward, and a great oh. mark by Gary Malarkey. That was well done, Gary Malarkey's strength. Held the opposition out and took it all. He called a one-hander. Great mark to Malarkey. Up on the wing position. He's looking for Turner or Mossop. Mossop will go against Lee. The ball's tapped at the back of the pack. Could have been a free kick against Turner to Landy, but the umpire said a bounce will take place. The ball's still on the centre wing position. Looking back toward Featherby, who fell heavily after trying to take that mark earlier. He's back up on his feet and does appear to be a little bit groggy, but all right. Landy playing strong football, tried to barge through, but the hand pass came from Mossop to Jeffries. Not a very good kick, and a free kick upfield against Cloak after Jeffries got rid of the ball will be taken by Turner. Turner wanting to play on straight away. Oh! Mark Lee uh, might have to be spoken to. Behind play, Mark Lee is being spoken to as Malthouse forces the ball over the boundary line. Yes, Robert Neal was trying to block the path of Mark Lee. It was very hard to do with such a big fellow. Free kick will be paid up there to Malthouse. Ball in the back pocket for Richmond. And the scoreboard showing 23 points is the lead which Richmond enjoy at this stage of the game. Well, the umpire being very te technical here, putting Malthouse right. Right on the spot where he was awarded the free kick. I suppose that's going to have to do that. And uh, Rum won't have any part of it. Let the ball go through to Malthouse again. So seconds being wasted here. Malthouse bringing the ball back now toward the members' wing. Mossop in front of Lee. Ball to ground. Taken by Neil. Hand passing out to Pete. Pete will have to kick quickly, which he does with the left foot and straight to Williams, who can't hold the mark on the second attempt. It's on the turf. There is a chance here for Tui. Tui hooks it out. Can't find a teammate. Strong play on that occasion by Williams. Got the ball out to Rowlings. And Rowlings kick heading toward the boundary line. Turner won't beat it. And we'll see a boundary throw in taking place. Good defence by the Richmond side, Jack. Yes, I'm very impressed with the way Williams is playing up there. But this whole Richmond defence is playing well. From the tap. Wiley's first on the scene. A quick kick. Under the half forward line. Cloak at the back. Sees the ball come over. Poor tackle by Murray. Still with Cloak. He's going to give the hand pass up. Plus now he gives it to Sarah. Goal number four coming up for Paul Sarah, but he misses it and only one point comes on the board. A strong play by Big Cloak Bob. He took about four of them on. And Reed was a little bit nonplussed. Didn't go in, didn't know whether to go in and tackle him or go and pick up his teammate. And he didn't do either of them. He got stuck halfway. Malarkey's kick going to the outer side looking for Peak. The man in front is uh, Jeff Rain. Well judged Mark, that little bit of strength being used to keep Peak away from the ball. Geelong continually trying to look for Peak, Jack. Yes, they are looking for him, Bob, and he's not going as well as he did in the first quarter. Malarkey was up high, but a good mark taken at the back. Stephen Lund coming across, reading that ball well. Goes for the short pass, finds Whitcomb out wide. Whitcomb from almost in the back pocket, puts it towards centre wing. A beautiful mark by Rollings. Right over the top of Featherby, a good mark indeed. Barry Rollings putting the ball up high. Well, no, not such a good kick. Wiley's there, can't take it. Sarah once again in there, but a free kick is going to Robert Neal of Geelong. 
he'll take this kick from back behind the half back line so they've got a lot of work to do Geelong before they can get a score the kick by Neil dropping short look at Faber's rolling really he let his teammate come through has been well taken on this occasion by Kane the ball going up high into the scoring zone and the mark down there uh, to big oh it's Brewer Ross Brewer when these fellas change uh, jumpers Bob they they do change a little bit in the pins don't yeah, I they I must admit Jack yes yeah. Ross Brewer, who was on the list, the official list is number 25, but in today's recorder is number 26. So Brewer going for this shot from only 30 metres out, but just about having the money on it. Only just got there, but it's a goal to Richmond. 10 goals, 17, 77, Geelong 6, 11, 47. This is certainly wasn't the best looking kick as Dale Waitman comes down and congratulates Brewer. The reason for that being that that was uh, Ross Brewer's first goal for the Richmond Football Club. Kicked many goals in his career, of course, with Melbourne and then Collingwood. But today, his first game, first senior game for Richmond. And hasn't had a great say in the game, but that's a very handy contribution to the score. Richmond are now 30 points in front. Well, goals are something of a premium as far as Geelong are concerned. Only six on the board. Moss have got the tap. Peak missed it, taken by Welsh. Welsh has kicked straight into the arms of Wickham, who's really coming into the game. A shocking kick from Wickham. Featherby one-handed and one-handed. Missed it completely, then was offloaded. And Williams comes away, playing a great game for the Tigers. A oh. shocking piece of play, though. He put the hand pass across the peak. Turner picks it up. And luckily for uh, Williams, no, maybe not luckily, as it's taken away by Jess. And uh, Jimmy Jess now puts a long kick out. Poor play on that occasion by Williams. Uh, took his eye off the ball, possibly. But there's the siren to signify the three-quarter time with Geelong 6-11, 47 Trailing Richmond, 10, 17, 77. That feather bears is weak. <laughs> Final quarter commencing, Cardinia Park, the venue. Richmond leading Geelong by 30 points as we go into the final term, and Geelong will have to find a lot of football if they wish to take this game out. Well, she's done so well on peak in the centre. Tried to get the ball away, couldn't do so. Rain's got it moving out toward Bartlett, whom we think has been reported, but it's taken away by Featherby now. He's on the wing outer side. A hand pass comes up to Drum. He messed it up a little bit. The thought of a hand pass to Jeffries now gets balanced and puts the ball in the forward pocket. This has been Geelong's pattern going into that forward pocket all day long. Tui not paid the mark, and the boundary umpire said a throw in will take place. Yes, and that's the area there where Geelong have been breaking down. They've continually got the ball over the half forward line but then you can't get enough score on the board 27 shots to 17 even though Geelong have had the ball up there probably as often as Richmond have Reynoldson tried to outmanoeuvre got his block the ball out to Floyd his kick was smothered Jess coming on Jess played a magnificent third quarter a little quiet in the first half and one handed attempt by the big fellow Mossop and eventually the ball comes out to Lee Lee gives it out to Landy Graham Landy of Richmond a floating kick over the head there of a Yates, but he's back on the scene again. Taps the ball out wide. Jeffries does it likewise, and it bounces awkwardly to, Je to big fellow Lee. Lee gives a hand pass to Waitman. Doesn't take possession. He's tapping the ball in front of him, and we'll now find a bounce to take place because nobody could uh, really get the ball clear. I really believe, Bob, if you're tapping the ball along in front of him, you should be in possession, and the umpire should rule accordingly. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Moss have got the tapped out, been tapped on again. Richmond a chance now, Reigns bursts through the centre, here's going to be a goal, I would think coming up off the boot of Jeff Reigns, he's just off target, and only one behind, but a nice piece of work, very decisive in what he was doing, then, wasn't it? Yes, Jack, and uh, it's a number of times now that Richmond have missed goals from exactly that position. I think the players are going too hard, going full tilt and can't get balance, but I thought Reigns could have got balance there, but Malarkey bringing the ball out again. 78 playing 47 in Richmond's favour. Landy up high, second attempt not paid, Ball play on as we find the, the loose ball picked up down there by Yates. Yates gets a quick kick down towards the centre wing. Turner's in position. He's a, a chance to have one bounce and have another one and then possibly give the hand pass across to Drum. Drum steadies and from the half forward line goes for the short pass and finds Bruce Nankervis now on the forward line. Yes, Bruce Nankervis was involved in the scuffle with uh, Kevin Bartlett that we told you of earlier. And we do believe that Bartlett, or I believe anyhow, that Bartlett's been reported. That's Nankervis going goalward for. Geelong and it's hit the post so Geelong won a goal but they just can't quite get one they need more than one too because there's still 30 points down Richmond 10 18 78 and Geelong 6 12 48 as uh, our erstwhile friend Lou Richards would say when you're hot you're hot and when you're not you're not Geelong certainly can't put goals on the board 
Up high was Lee. Ball forced down to Matthews, and Matthews missed the ball and put out wide by the Richmond defence. In that case, it was the little fellow in Waitman. Featherby was first on the scene, gets around Cloak. Cloak tackled him, got the ball back. It was a good tackle by Cloak. Peak should get the free kick, and that's the way that umpire never Nash sees. Peak started off the game in tremendous form in the first quarter, but uh, since Welsh has gone on to him in the centre of the, uh, of the, the ground, they uh, certainly taken a little bit of the luster off Peak's game. Jess, Bobby told you, played a very good third quarter and doing well in the final quarter, which you're watching, of course, on Seven's Big League. Could have been a free kick on that occasion, but the umpire was... Yes, it was a free kick. Well, it might have been to Burrell. Poor play by uh, Yates there to just drop the ball, and that meant a 15-metre penalty. It, go, it allows Brewer 30 metres, really, because there was nobody on the mark, and there's the result. It's four points from Ross Brewer, his second. Undisciplined football by Geelong on that occasion, as Bobby Skilton pointed out. Geelong sit on six goals, 12, 48, and the Richmond score has been changed to show that they are now 11, 18, and that has been 84 points on the board. The time clock is four minutes into the final term. Yes, Bob, it was poor football, wasn't it, uh, on the part of H. Undisciplined football. And, uh, and Brewer, who knows a fair bit about football, has been playing long enough. He took full advantage of it. He's no fool, Jack. No, he knows what he's doing. He turned that 15 metre, I think he might have got about 35 to 40 metres out of it. And how the ball, new ball, has been brought back to umpire Neville Max. And the game may have been even up to half time, but it certainly hasn't been in the second half. Umpire Neville Nash. Mossop against Lee. Lee gets it down to Waitman. Waitman towards centre half forward. And this time Yates does take the mark. He's at centre half back. Should go straight down the ground, but coming out wide. The lead is by Nan Curvis. Chopped off by Reigns. No, Nan Curvis got there. Looks. Looks for a hand pass to Whitcomb. He's played quite a good game. Whitcomb taking a long time to get balanced and get a kick. Now the 15 metre penalty will run the 15 metre penalty. The free kick will be paid downfield at centre half forward. The ball is with drum. Going into the forward pocket once again. It's drawn into the back of the opposition, but the mark has been taken by Tui. Tui, who has kicked uh, two goals, both early in the piece. In fact, I think in the first quarter. Yes, the first two goals Geelong got, Bob from memory. Now Bernard Tui, hopeful of making it goal number three and number seven for Geelong. And the goal umpire does not move, so Tui kicks his third and the Geelong. Go to seven goals, seven goals, 12, 54 points with Richmond, 11, 18, 84. There's 30 points the difference, Tui on screen, told you he kicked the first two goals for Geelong early today in the first quarter, of course, and... Uh, They've been alternating their plays at full forward, Bob. Yes, it's been a strange move, really, Jack. Now you often find uh, that the big ruckman comes and pl virtually plays the full, full forward position rather than the, the ruckman, but uh, Tui and Featherby have literally played it as full forwards. Over the top comes Richard Murray, gets the ball down towards Lunn. Lunn has it taken away by Wiley, another chance of a goal coming up as Wiley with a left foot kick, screws it back towards the big ones. He's offline and only one point. Good piece of work by Robert Wiley there. Just took it from the hands of the Geelong players. Richmond seemed more determined to me, more desperate for possession. Malarkey. Not a great kick. Rob was a bit toward Mossop. Lee's there to spoil. Did that quite well. Followed it on. Kicked it off the ground straight to Bartlett. It wasn't long enough to be paid a mark. Taken by Rowlings. He puts it into the full forward zone. And standing there to take the mark is Brewer. Brewer has kicked two goals. And that certainly looked easy as far as the Richmond team was concerned. Always contesting. Ross Brewer, no more than 20 metres out from where he'll kick. Dead in front of goal. Oh, shocking kick by Brewer. I think he just tried to steer it in, Bob, without putting the boot behind it. He's kicked it through for a point over. At that point, takes the scoreboard to 32 points. The margin held by Richmond, 11.20 to 7.12. Malarkey, a lovely kick from fullback. Peak up high, giving, giving away a free kick. Now it's gone the other way. Peak was, Peak was being held uh, prior to the fact that he did get onto the shot. I think he might have been helped too a little bit along there. Peak putting the ball in toward the centre of the ground. Players set themselves. The ball hits the turf. Kicked out by Whitcomb. There's a chance for Malthouse. Threw the ball down and tackled it. That's a good decision. That's a good decision. Malthouse had possession, threw it away. Then Neil tackled him and uh, he picked up the free kick. Into the pockets they go again. The mark not taken, Jess taps it away. Malthouse there, lost possession, caught in possession again, holding the ball again against Malthouse. 
and Nothouse a little unfortunate that time. Sure, it was a free kick the first time, but that's certainly making uh, things hard to get. Robert Neal with the kick. Tui, thinking about a lead, but not uh, really making it convincing. And a lovely kick from Neal, right up towards the goal square. Tui up high, a lovely mark from Bernard Tui. Tui, who has kicked three goals. He was sort of up and down, he took it on the way down, Bob. Uh, he's kicked uh, those two goals. He's kicked three, three goals. Say, Jack. Yeah, he kicked three goals. Uh, this one, about the easiest goal. Jeff Rain's coming off, it appears, for Richmond, as Tui goes in to have this shot toward goal. He popped it through for his fourth goal. So you might not spend course yet. We've been playing eight and a half minutes at the final turn, which you're watching. And Geelong now are 36 points down to Richmond. Sorry, 20, 26 points, I'm sorry. It's uh, Philip Egan who's come on the ground to go to the winning place of uh, Jeff Raines. Raines might possibly been taken off because uh, in the last couple of moments, Whitcomb has been uh, very active in the Geelong forward thrust. Yeah, Whitcomb hasn't done a bad job for the day, Bob. He's done quite well. Beg your pardon, Mike. You know, Murray Whitcomb's had 18 kicks thus far, so he I has... I must admit, a couple of those kicks were disgraceful and oh, wouldn't he... really give him much credit for well, them. Well, he had possession <laughs> and tried to kick it, but a couple really didn't uh, make good contact. But the important thing is he's getting them. Nice bounce. Mossop got the tap. Tapped on by Peak. Forced through the pack, and eventually Kane gets a loose ball and puts it out wide towards the centre wing. Robert Neal racing after it for Geelong. Leaves oh. it for Peak. Peak lost possession. Neal, I felt, was tackled too high. Well, that was a bit of a mess up between them, between Peak and Neal. They could have raffled it. I think they, they let it go for each other. And no one actually went for the ball. Uh, there's nothing decisive out there. Lack of talking, I'd imagine. Mossop up, and so was Lee, and the umpire said a free kick will go the way of Mossop. Should bring the ball in towards centre half forward instead of going around that flank. But the flank it is. Up high was Jess, couldn't take the mark. A quick hand pass from Matthews. Turner got a bad bounce, comes back towards Malthouse, who takes the ball away, taps it back towards the centre wing, and we find the out of trouble through Graham Landy into the centre. Waitman couldn't quite take the mark. He backs up well though, and from centre half forward, Waitman goes for the short pass. Coming across the front of the pack, we saw the big fellow there in the roach, picked up by Bartlett. He goes towards goal, but he's offline and only one point results. Well, that was a golden opportunity lost down there by Turner. He had the goals open, had he been able to gain possession and get, get it moving when well, we could have seen a different score going up. But now Malarkey kicking in from the full back area and going out toward the outer side, looking for Mossop. No one made contact with that ball. If it runs out of bounds, of course, it'll be a free kick to Richmond. Lee picked up just inside the boundary line. Getting balanced, getting back, looking for Brewer. Can't take the mark, could have been a free kick in there, and the umpire has ruled accordingly. Bart was off and running toward goal with the ball, but the umpire had paid the free kick. I was just thinking it was fortunate for Zong that it was a free kick. Brewer putting the ball up towards the square. He was looking for Roach, off the hands of the pack. Lund takes the ball away, forces it over the boundary line. The throw-in will take place five metres around from the behind post. Forward pocket for the Tigers, who uh, at the moment hold a 27-point advantage, 11 minutes into the final turn. In attack of the Tigers now, about 25 metres out from their goal, the ball will land after the throw-in. Comes off the side of the pack. Moss oh, it was Neil, couldn't do much with it. In there as a pack once again, the ball forced out to Waitman from the boundary line. He tries to get it back. He's looking for a forward, but there's a good mark on the feet. Pay to Peak, yes, it's been paid. Right in the goal screen. Peak, thought of a short pass, and the umpire said the man on the mark was too far forward. Now Peak's playing on. Not allowed to do that. The umpire said you must kick over the mark. Peak will be forced to have another kick as Mossop retrieves the ball on the outer side. The ball will have to come back to Peak. I was talking about his first quarter, Bob. He had eight kicks, didn't he? We're talking about... Eight kicks, six hand passes, and took four marks, Jack. Yes, and then the wisdom of Francis Burke came in and uh, he said that we'll put Peter Welsh on peak and try and take a little bit of the edge off his game, and Welsh has done that and kicked also two goals for himself, so he's done a great job for his team. A kick missed by Brewer, picked up by Cloak, straight into Brewer again, then Cloak puts a hand pass over the top. Egan of Richmond first on the scene. The left foot kick from Egan. It's a lovely looking kick. It's right up towards the goal square. It's just offline, though, and bounces through for one point. Philip Egan, who just a few moments ago came on to replace Jeff Raines. Malarkey goes for the short pass, finds Peak, couldn't take the mark. A quick hand pass though across to Yates. Yates having the chance to bounce. He's bouncing every five metres literally. Gets a hand pass up to Mossop. Mossop's hand pass smothered by Rollings. 
and uh, Rowan could see what was coming, read the play beautifully, puts the kick up forward, but it's straight to the arms of Gary Malarkey. Malarkey with a short pass out to Neil. Neil on the halfback, playing for Geelong, now coming down the wall to centre wing position. Putting the ball down to Featherby. Featherby, well, I thought might have been able to get to that one, but couldn't quite make it. It's kicked off in midair by Nan Curvis, the ball going out of bounds on the foot. A kick to be taken by Williams of Richmond. He easily gets around Calvin Matthews. Gains an extra 15 minute metres and puts the ball up towards centre wing. Lee has the ball punched away. Featherby first on the scene. Kicks an underground put a ball along towards the, uh, Kelvin Matthews. It puts him really under pressure. And uh, Matthews can't get the ball clear. Bruce Nan Curvis gets a hand pass over the top. Taken by Drum. Drum close to the boundary line. But lovely uh, football by Drum. Gets it back towards Tui. And Tui takes the mark with a chance of being uh, his fifth goal. Well, Tui did start the day at full forward, Bob. And then uh, Goggin made these changes around. Now we see Tui back in the full forward position and handling the situation quite well. Going for the fifth goal. 15 metres out. And Geelong come back through Tui for another goal. So 9-12 is Geelong score to Richmond 11-22. 88 playing 66, 22 points the difference, 14 minutes into the final turn. You could say four straight kicks is what is required to get Geelong back into the game. Bernard Tui who has kicked five goals. Well, can Geelong come back? We'll see. Lee and Mossop. Lee got the tap straight to Bruce Nan Curvis. The ball comes straight to Rollins, who's all by himself playing a defensive role there. Just got the kick in the nick of time as Neil closed the gap on him. Too many Geelong players up. Richard Murray in there being held, I thought. Now it's play on. Yates got a long hand pass out to Mossop. Mossop looking for a hand pass. It's over to Peak at Travels. Peak's penetrating kick coming down to the half forward zone. Oh, to the chance for Turner. Can't pick it up again. He's not having the best of days, Michael Turner. And a free kick going against him. Free kick to be taken by, well, probably one of the surprise packets of the Richmond side. Richmond have known for a long while that Shane Williams has talent. He's certainly displayed it today. Yes, he's played a great uh, first three quarters and continuing in the final quarter. Placing the ball out to Cloak. He was well spoiled. The ball on the turf once again. Picked up by Kane. Took a little bit long to get the hand pass worth. Oh, drum got a biff then. And it will be a free kick against Cloak. Cloak being spoken to by umpire Vassilou. And drum right from the centre of the ground. Going out wide again with a... One of those widow maker passes comes down to Peak. They're a shocking pass to get. And Peak looking for 15 metres. The umpire not falling into that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I must think the umpires are stupid or something. Well, Peak is a long way out from goal. He'd have to be close to 70 metres. He's going to put the ball up long into the square. Hopeful for Tui again. And the torpedo punt kick makes a lot of ground. Tui got the hands of it. Couldn't control it. And the ball has run out of bounds. Tui had virtually no chance of taking that mark, coming from well behind the pack. So from right alongside the behind post, we see the throw in with Reynoldson and the Dunn. Neither player could get the tap, it's punched back there by Williams, picked up by Malthouse. Malthouse's kick smothered, comes off the hands, Shane Williams again punches the ball out, and the Waitman accepts it, puts the ball up towards the wing, and almost a one-hander there by Mark Lee, tap wide by, uh, by Turner. Turner now has time to steady and put the kick across the ground. He's looking for Floyd. Floyd gets an awkward bounce, throws the ball out. He was still in possession, but taps the ball up now to Bruce Nankervis. Nankervis down towards the forward area, and Matthews has the ball punched away from him, and it's picked up by Strawn. Strawn now goes out wide, looking for and finding Graham Landy very close to the boundary line, still in play. Landy from the half-back line, almost in the back pocket, really. Hand passes over the top to Kane. Kane now, a high kick. One really a rainmaker. As Cloak was up, held had a lot of strength, but Jeffries, well, equal to the occasion, takes the ball away in beautiful fashion, steadies, puts a shocking kick forward, but unfortunately drops into the arms of a teammate in Robert Neal. Robert Neal, too far out to score, I would suggest, 65 metres out. He'll be hoping for a high flyer down there or a short pass. Can't see any shorts in there at present. He's going for the long kick. Torpedo punt kick. Gee, it's making good ground, but it won't quite make the distance. Tap through very last line. Just off the goal line, tapped through for one behind by Straw. So Geelong needed that goal to keep them in the game. As you see, they trail by 21 points. The time clock is at 17 and a half minute mark of the final turn. 
Reynolds from over the top is done. Tried to spoil Jess, but wasn't successful in so doing. And Jimmy Jess takes the mark in the half-back area. He's on the flank position, looking up for Cloak. Hard man to spoil. Cloak trying to keep Jeffries out. Jeffries into the back of Cloak slightly. Good recovery by Cloak. Got the ball down to Egan. Egan in trouble. Went for a hand pass. And the hand pass has found the boundary. Umpire has to ask a question by the crowd if he's only the free kick or putting it out on purpose. And he shook his head and called for a boundary throw in, which has come down to Reed. Reed now getting a hand pass. Bruce Nan Curvis only kicking from the left. The lead is by Tui. The pass is no. It's Featherby out there leading. Can't take the mark. It's on the turf. Featherby follows it through as well. Tackled. In fact, could have been a free kick to Featherby. Short pass comes back from Featherby. Meant for Turner, but chopped off by Landy. Graham Landy looking up toward the centre of the ground. Now he's changed his mind again. He might come out to Mark Lee on the member's side, but I think he'd be well informed to go to the outer side. He's looking for Clay. Close to Jeffries again who put the ball down. Good football. Hand pass was quick in the peak from look like Drum got the hand pass working. He's drawn in trouble there. Well, tackled by Matthews. Hold the ball too long. Holding the ball for mine. There will be a free kick to Kelvin Matthews off Geelong. He gets it moving quickly before the forward line gets blocked up. He can find Tui and that is done. Tui has five goals to his credit at the moment. His kicking today has been beautiful. He's uh, favours the drop punt and the, each kick he's had so far, although I think this is probably the most acute angle that he's been on all, right throughout. There's no breeze to worry him. And the kick from Tui, the goal up by a dozen minutes. So once again, Tui's, Tui's kicking is impeccable. Six goals on the board to take Geelong to 10 goals, 13, 73. Only 15 points now the margin in favour of the Tigers on 11, 22, 88. Well, the time clock's ticking around now to the 19 and a half minute mark, so uh, I would assume we're going to go close to 30 minutes have, uh, as we have in, all the, in the first three quarters. The crowd have come to life a little bit as you're here. Umpire Vassily are about to start proceeding. Tilly has kicked four goals straight in this quarter, Jack. Great performance. The ball tapped down, it's come to Wiley. The quick left foot comes out of the pack, heading for the half forward line. It's Reed in pursuit for Geelong. A little bit of heavy shepherding uh, by Lowe. Reed's hand pass, not a good one. Put no under a bit of pressure, really. Had to take time to get done. It's put a penetrating kick into the half forward zone. Just for his own man as a chance for Turner or Lordy. First turn can have it. Now it's Drum on the scene for Geelong. Got it out looking for a teammate. He dives in desperately trying to gain possession. But the umpire said a bounce will take place about 60 metres out, possibly 55 metres out from Geelong's goal. Chance of a score here. Reynoldson got the right, got the tack to it. Is a chance? Jess is there. Turner, Turner in goals. Oh, his hand passes intercepted. Matthews, a good tackle by Matthews. He was holding the ball against his opponent, according to the umpire, so no free kick forthcoming. Unfortunate for Matthews because it was a beautiful tackle. Yeah, it's good interception down there, too. The Turner hand pass was going right into the goal square. It was meant for Tui, but it was chopped. Poor off. hand pass, actually. Jack. It was a poor hand pass. Had enough room, I, I thought. Now, still a chance. Picked up by Lund. The kick not quite on target. Swinging very late. Sorry, it was Floyd, not Lund. And uh, we'll see only one point going up. Geelong needing goals. It was a golden opportunity lost. 21 minutes have gone, the final term you're watching. And the kick will come from the boot of Strawn from the full-back position. Member side, he elects to go. Mossop a chance. Mossop got the hands to it and will be taken back on the second grade. The big John Mossop from half four. Cloak now in the rack. He's on the mark at the moment. So Mossop goes across the ground. Looking for Lund. Lund takes the mark. Plays on straight away. Breaks away from the tackle. An open goal for Cunningham. He puts it through the centre. Good play, Stephen Lund. His first to take Geelong to 11-14. 80 points. Only eight points now. The two, Richmond, 11, 22, 88. Well, that was a great piece of work by Lund. He was just about caught. And she had paced touring away from the tackle. And I think you had a little bit more than the uh, allowable distance, but the umpire didn't penalise him for that. And now it's only eight points here in Cardinia Park. 22 minutes have gone. Umpire Nash about to put it down now. The crowd have come to life, as I said before. It's Cloak against Mossop. Mossop got the tap down, but straight to Welsh. Welsh breaking away under his left foot. Oh, not a very good kick. I think he might have been heading for the boundary line. Reed is there. Oh, good shepherding on that occasion. The hand pass comes to Murray. That was Lund doing the shepherding back there. The kick is a high one into the half-forward flank area.
chance for Neil. Welsh is there for Richmond. He can't. He had possession and then lost it. Neil follows the ball through. It's very close to the line. Welsh's hand pass must be over the boundary line, and the umpire said a boundary throw in. On the centre wing position, the ball will be brought back into play by the boundary umpire. Eight points separate these teams as the time clock ticks around toward the 23-minute mark. Mossop doesn't go for the tap, gets a hand pass back, kicked off the ground by Floyd, goes straight to Welsh of Richmond. Welsh's kick up towards half forward, and Yates takes a fine mark. Strong mark. Bartlett holding up the scene, and Yates could lose possession here. Going for the short pass, you can see a teammate down there who's found Lung. He runs around... Brewer looking for a lead, can't find one. Cloak would be favoured to take this mark and the strong arms of Cloak bring the ball. Yes, not, not good play by Lund there. He did well until he just blindly kicked down the ground, didn't look for his forwards and went straight to Cloak all on his own. Cloak wasting a bit of time, is, that's what the Geelong supporters are saying. Yates again high over the pack, a beautiful mark. Then hand passes out to Lund. Lund now from centre wing, gives it on to Floyd. Geelong looking good at the moment as Floyd puts a long kick down. Tui in position to take the mark up and just takes it. So Tui, who's put six goals on the board so far, four goals in this final term, the opportunity of making the margin between the sides only two points. We're nearly 24 minutes into the final term. As Bernard Tui from the angle goes goalward. It's a nice looking kick. Tui brings up one point only. Well, the crowd, did, <laughs> the crowd thought it was a goal. Only one point. That would have been a great chance for Geelong. But it's only seven points in it now. And the ball is in their forward zone, of course, because it's in the full back position for Richmond. A 15-metre penalty. That was bad on Featherby's part to give that away. Strawn taking advantage of it, getting the ball right out towards centre wing on the outer side where Landy flew. Couldn't take the mark. But Turner breaking away from the pack. Trying to get Geelong back into attack. He's taken his second bounce. Hand passes into Floyd. Floyd gets it back. That's Pearl. Bad hand pass there. It was meant for Peak. It's going to be taken away here by Rowan. He's got a hand pass out. Floyd in pursuit. Can't pick it up cleanly. The ball close to the boundary line. He's got around. He's looking for a hand pass. No, he gets the boot into it. Down towards Reynoldson. Up high, but no, under the ball. Couldn't take the mark. It's on the turf. Geelong about to come forward through Nan Curvis. Nan Curvis got a hand pass working. Lovely kick over up forward by Drummond. It's offline though. It goes close to the boundary line. Matthews tries to keep it in play. Cannot do so. Slips, goes over the boundary line. A throw in to take place. We're right on the 25 minute mark. The final term you're watching from Cardinia Park between Geelong and Richmond. Seven points between the teams. Emma Dunn took the ball from the boundary. Throw in Matthews. Looks for a hand pass into the forward zone. It's been chopped off. And it's Kane doing a good job there now. That could have been a free kick against Williams. The umpire said not. So Williams has done a fine job so far today. The ball knocked down by Emma Dunn. Grabbed by Robert Neal. Can't get the hand pass clear. Eventually it's taken by Malthouse. Trying to break through the pack. Forced over the boundary line. Another throw in to take place. 30 seconds of the time on. Geelong trailing by seven points against Richmond. And that's seven points, Jack. Only five minutes into the fourth uh, final term, it was a 36-point lead held by the Tigers. Egan coming away, drives the ball up towards the centre. Mark Lee can't take possession. It's off the hands of Lee towards Peak. Peak uh, uh, almost caught one too high, but he got out of trouble. The left foot kicked down towards the forward area. Turner lead, led in the race for the ball, but got a bad bounce. Picked up by Rollings. His kick off the side of the boot, up towards centre wing. And it will be a free kick upfield, I feel, because... Uh, he caught one too high as he put that ball forward, Rollings, and the kick will be taken out there by Peter Welch. He's right on centre wing on the outer side of the ground. No one on the mark. Oh, Moss have just got there. So Moss up on the mark for Welch, who's trying to hold up proceedings slightly. We're 26 and a quarter minutes into the final term as Welch puts the ball up toward the half-forward zone and Roach took the chest mark. The kick beat the pack and Roach coming in last on the scene has taken the mark. He'd be too far out to score, but he should get the ball right up to the goal square. He won't want to go for any short pass. I'm sure he'll try and pick it long. Torpedo punt kick. Makes a lot of distance. It might even get through for a score. Touched by Jeffries. Punched away and then through. Hit the post. Actually off the hands of the players. And only one point resolving. So Richmond can breathe again because they're eight points in front. And we're nearly 27 minutes into the final term. The ball on the Richmond forward line. Egan can't take the mark. Yates get a hand pass into Whitcomb. Whitcomb on centre wing. Can he see a forward? Can he find a forward? The kick is too high. It's all Richmond now. Matthews let out under the ball. The kick was too long for him. Drums in there for Geelong. If he can hook it around, he can't quite make the ground with it. It's running, but not toward the goal. It's running toward the boundary line. Desperate attempts down there to gain possession, but the umpire said a boundary throw in. Geelong desperately trying to come into that game, Jack, but uh, 
drum not on the scene eight points the margin the clock ticking away 27 and a half minutes as we see the throw in in the forward pocket Emmett Dunn gets the ball down Damien Drum of uh, Geelong screws the ball towards a goal square two he's there right by Tui and the Tui with the opportunity of making it goal number seven and only two points between the sides well point blank range I could not imagine Bernard Tui missing this shot toward or for goal trying to kick his seventh goal He's kicked the two points of difference here at Cardinia Park with the time clock at the 28 minute mark. Richmond 11, 23, 89. Geelong 12, 15, 87. Well, what an exciting day. Time it is in the game now. 28 minutes have gone. I'll go into the other quarters. The first quarter went 29, 50. The second quarter, 29.30. The third quarter, in 30.40. So we're back at the centre now. If Geelong get a goal, they can take the game out. But Richmond desperate to get the ball moving forward. Can't do much with it yet. From the centre, Jeffrey tried to get it out. Can't do so. The umpire said a bounce will take place right in the centre of Cardinia Park. As the seconds tick away at Cardinia Park, the hearts are fluttering. Up they fly. It's been tapped down to Rollings. Rollings can't get the ball to it all. Couldn't quite get the boot to it. No, it's still in there. The umpire said a free kick will go the way of Rollins. He might have been a bit lucky on that occasion, but Barry Rollins has the ball for Richmond, and this is possibly the kick that will save Richmond from defeat as Rollins puts the ball out wide to the half forward flank area. Roach comes in to do some heavy work against Jeffries, and the umpire said a boundary throw in will take place. 29 minutes have now gone. Geelong trail by two points. Moss have got the front berth straight to Neil. Should get a kick. He ran into trouble. Could have been holding the ball against him. Picked up on that occasion by Featherby. Hand passes to Bruce Van Curvis. Geelong going forward. There's a chance for Matthews and Williams. Matthews in front looking for the free kick. None paid. A pack falling up down on the half forward line for Geelong. And we'll see a bounce taking place. 29 and a half minutes have gone. Two points the difference. Richmond lead at Cardinia Park. Moss upon the scene a bit late, beaten by Cloak, the ball out wide for Range, who's come back on the scene in the interchange. Range with the ball in front of him, having trouble picking up. Pressure by Nan Curvis. Nan Curvis might have been pushed, he's been pushed in the back, tackle too high, said umpire Vassilou, and he will take the free kick. He'll have to get the ball moving quickly. He kicks in towards centre half forward. Featherby, the siren! The siren is sounded here at Cardinia Park. Richmond 11, 23, 89, have defeated Geelong. 12 goals, 15, 87. They came back hard, Mike, didn't they? 